meeting in order. Roll call, please. Herbert? Yes. Musta? Here. Townsend? Here. Angeline? Here. Bush? Here. Debo? Here. Nichols? Here. Potter? Yes, ma'am. Taylor? Here. Can you join us for our pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one addition, J10, points to the City of Cadillac LDFA. Are there any other additions or deletions? Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Support. We have a motion and support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is passed. The agenda is approved. True. We have no employee recognition, presentations, and report. We have our visitors. You're welcome, Joy. Thanks for having me. So, I gave you all a good bag. So, this is a typical goodie bag that we give out. We give out about 4,000 of these throughout the summer um, to like people, groups that come into town. We give out to the different campgrounds, the different hotels. And then we give out probably another 10 to 15,000 of them um, to different trade shows and different things that we go that we attend downstate, Novi, Fort Wayne, Chicago, all the other places. So some of the materials that you see in there, um, I know the Pure Michigan magazine, if you look at page 50 in there, we have an advertisement in that magazine. Um, so that's a, a significant investment for us to advertise along at the state level and to the international and national markets. Um, so it's a, it's a, there's some very specific things in there too that I just wanted to allow you guys to understand that we actually have because there's a lot of like the Indian trails and different things like that inside of those. A lot of people don't realize that we even have some of those recreational opportunities here in the area. So to my little presentation, um, I opted not to do this because I figured I just talk directly to you and uh, give you something to, to walk away with. Um, so we are the office of fun. Um, we Everything that we do is fun. That's what we do. We, we try to make sure that we know what is going on in the greater Cadillac area. I do just want to remind you that we market everything from north to Buckley, all the way down to Leroy, all the way over to Merritt, and all the way over to Wellston. So although we're called the Cadillac, the Cadillac Area Visitors Bureau, we encompass all of those little communities and everything, and we help them market themselves as well. So um, and when I say market, I'm talking about consumer marketing, <coughs> business to business or whatever. So we're, we're primarily consumer marketing. So you can flip to the next page. Some of the different things that, um, we have a brand new website. We invested $25,000 into a brand new website last year. It has over 500 pages of cool things to do in the Cadillac area. Um, this past year we invested up probably about 50,000, just 50 to 60,000 in Google advertising to send people to that, that, uh, that page. So we have a reach just within our, our website of over a million and a half um, people that have looked at our website just over the last year. Um, we have a very active events page, so if there's consumers out there or people that put events and different things like that together, please feel free to go out to CadillacMichigan.com, upload all of your events to our, our activity calendar, um, it, and it doesn't cost anything. So we really like to make sure that we have that on there, because if it's not on there, then we can't help you promote it. Um, along with all the different things that we do, like the Pure Michigan advertising, um, that brings us leads, like sales leads, people that are reading that magazine, they're like, oh, I want some more information, so they send us their contact information. So just over the last 18 months, we've collected over 20,000 email addresses and mailing addresses that we are direct marketing to right now. Um, next week, we will direct market our new, ma our new winter magazine directly to all of those 20,000 people. Um, so over the next year, those people will get four different uh, magazines from us and we'll be direct marketing to them through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on web, when you open your mobile phone, if somebody you know, we also do a lot of remarketing, so I know we were just talking about this earlier. So if you go out to Google and you start looking for something, and then all of a sudden you start getting, you know, like you were looking for new glasses, and all of a sudden you start getting all these advertisements for new glasses, um, that's artificial intelligence and different things like that that we as marketers use all the time to remarket to you. So every time you go to those websites, we're, we're, we're using key words and different things like that to, to tag you so we can collect your, your information and we can remarket to you. So. From a marketer's perspective, it's really exciting. From a consumer perspective, it's a little, it's a little scary, but it's okay. It's all good. 
Um, so our Facebook page is, one, is the largest Facebook page in the area outside of our media. Um, so we have about 35,000 active fans on our Facebook page, um, along with the Instagram and Twitter. Um, we have an active YouTube channel. We have over 62 videos on our YouTube channel. If you've never been to that, that's um, CBB, CBD Cadillac. Really cool stuff if you want to engage future employers, somebody to come up with Cadillac. There's some really cool videos on there that really have engaged a lot of people over the, over the past couple of years when we've had them up there. Um, our visitor's guide. So I kind of touched on this already. We, in the past, we've been doing just one 62-page guide, um, and we were shipping 75,000 of them throughout the year. Um, this past fall, I, we printed 35,000 fall guides, which next week, we'll, or right now, we're printing 35,000 winter guides, and then we'll be doing spring and then summer. So we're actually increasing to 75,000 distribution to about 125,000 distribution, but we're direct marketing those to very specific people. So pretty excited about that. Um, if you want any of those copies, you can always go out to our website um, and request a guide to be sent to somebody. We don't ship in town, um, but I know that we usually drop off a box or so to this building. Um, so if you're ever interested in checking this out, maybe check with the clerk's office or wherever. Um, or contact our office. So like Judy and Mike and a couple of the other uh, commissioners, they dropped through our office and picked up materials. So we always have a lot of materials to do. Um, Niche campaigns. In that goodie bag, you have a handful of little brochures. So these are all little niche markets that Cadillac can talk about that other communities really don't have much to talk about. Um, especially KISS, you know. We are the only, the only community in the world that has a nine foot KISS monument. Um, and we do have people come in from all over the world to get their picture taken next to that and have Jim Neff um, do the tour. So, Although it sounds really crazy, but it's, it is a huge attraction, especially in the, in the music industry. Um, my, morale Mushrooms is a big one too, still. You know, we, um, we promote those in the National Forest, and we also partner with the Music Mushroom Festival in a, in a pretty big way to help them um, promote themselves. Building sculptures and monuments. This was an interesting one, because it, if you open it up and you look at it, you're like, wow, I didn't realize we had all those monuments. But once you start actually looking at what we have, and you start doing a little bit of research, you learn so much because it's, it's, it's amazing how many different parts and pieces that we have here in our community that we just drive by because it's always been there, but we don't really know the story behind it. So those are some of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to tell those stories. Um, like with the KISS monument, the whole reason for that was that, what, since 1975, everybody here knew about the story. Or if you're a huge KISS fan, you knew about the story. But if you drove by Cadillac, you had no idea that KISS had ever visited here, right? So now we have a monument that kind of tells a story, and then we have a bunch of other marketing materials over there. Um, the Old Indian Trail was another one. Um, we had a couple different people come into our office about three years ago, and, come, and were a little upset because they had tried going on the Indian Trail, the previous materials, and since that last publication had been published for, through the Historical Society, a lot of the easements had changed. So there was a lot of private property that people were going over. Mm -hmm. And those private property owners weren't too happy about it. So um, we were fortunate enough to have a, a, a employability, re-employability volunteer in our office during that time frame, and he took it on as a project. Um, so he went through and he did all of the research, verified every single marker, worked with the, um, the uh, frame, I can't pronounce his last name. Frank E. You can see his, his, his L, 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 I can't even <laughs> pronounce it. Um, he, he's one of the one of the great um, Indian chiefs, I think, up at uh, up, up in Traverse City. And he he worked with them, and they verified everything. So we're constantly updating that as well because some some of the markers on private property get moved every once in a while. Um, but some cool stuff. Fall color fall color tour brings in. A ton of people every year. Um, this past year, it was it was fantastic. I mean, our our fall occupancy numbers for our hotels just keep going up and up and up. Um, because you know, if you don't think about it, but from Claire to Cadillac, you're on, we're in a constant increase, right? That's why we have all those passing lanes because the trucks can't get here very easy. So um, so when our weather starts changing, we're changing quicker and. Um, a little bit differently than the rest of the of the area, as well as our, our national forest. So we have 
we have natural beauty in the area, and why not take advantage of it, right? Um, and, and we have eight golf courses, but right now we only have seven of them in our collaborative. So we also take all those golf courses together. There's like nine different golf shows that um, between Evergreen and the Visitors Bureau, we, we collectively take all of their information, we, and we market them to people to bring groups and different things like that. I know like Evergreen this past summer, they had 127 golf groups throughout the summer they came to Cadillac. And those groups are anywhere from 20 people plus. So that's a lot of people that come into our area to, to golf. So, any questions on anything there? No question about how we pay for all this, right? <laughs> all right, I'll just keep going and we'll talk about that real quick at the end. Um, Kelly Creek Trails Collaborative, about four years ago, um, we felt we found the need to un really understand what our trails, what we can do and we can't do on our trails. Because some of our trails, you can you can have motorized vehicles on it. Some of them you can, you know, snowmobile trails. You can only use certain you know certain parts of it during certain times of the year. You have some of our some of our summer trails. You can't use in the winter time, or you you know, can you cross country ski or can you do motorized or what? So we brought all the trail stakeholders together. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, but it really turned out. So um, we we applied for a, an award last year. We weren't award last year, but we're hoping that we're going to get it this next year because we're actually bringing the Federal Forest, the DNR, the city, and two private trail owners plus users into a consistent trails collaborative every two months. So what we're doing there is we're collectively talking about resources, we're talking about grants, we're talking about what all is going on at the state level so we can understand just the whole trail movement. Um, so that's been really, really awesome. So I'm, I'm hoping to be able to present uh, uh, to the community maybe probably March or April that hopefully we'll, we'll win an award on that one this next year at the Pure Michigan Conference. Um, Kelly Carey Golf Collaborative, I already hit on that one. And then we also have regional and statewide partnerships. We have a partnership with Pure Michigan. So um, Michigan.org, you can also, the DNR, we have West Michigan Tourist Association, Great Lakes Fisherman's Digest, um, Great Lakes uh, Northern Trails. Um, so here's, here's, here's the numbers. From 2011 to 2017, Wexford County has increased by 85% in visitor spending. So in 2011, we're at about 69 million per year. In 2017, it ended at 130 million. Um, those are pretty significant. Misaki County had a 15% increase. Osceola had a 20% increase. Northwest region, this whole region up in the corner had um, a 20% increase. And even at the state level, they only had a 20% increase. So, you know, Wexford County, we're doing some really cool stuff here, and we're actually, we're, our occupancy numbers, our revenue numbers have increased significantly. So that's why you're seeing all these developments, and that's why you're seeing these, these cool restaurants even showing up, not just in Cadillac, you're seeing some of them been doing very well out in the outskirts of the community. Um, and over the last eight years, we've invested almost $2.4 million in, in advertising our community. Um, and this is an interesting one. So I'm, I'm based on, I'm rated for my board off of hotel occupancy, and um, which means one room night, right? One room night out of, so every night of the year, we have 627 room, hotel rooms available to people to rent. Um, so right now we are at a 53% increase year to year. So like in 2011, we were selling 68,000 hotel rooms in our community. Um, this past year, we ended at about 104,000. So. It was 623. 627. Yeah, 68, 626. Yeah, to 104. It's all in your thing there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're at a 53% increase year over year. Um, which, dollar-wise, I know like for our budget, increased. So when I started eight years ago, we were at 125,000 approximately in, in um, annual revenue. Um, this past year, we're at 495,000. So pretty significant. Um, and here's where you guys. Here's some numbers for you to play with. Thereafter is total jobs. NADC um, report from 2014 to 17. So we had an increase of 100. 
uh, full-time full -time jobs in the tourism sector in Wexford County, 135 in Wasaki County, and um, 85 full-time jobs in Osceola. So the interesting thing is there's, like in Wexford County, we have a huge increase in revenue, but we're, we're still filling those, those positions with just part-time jobs. So the goal is to try to get even more revenue coming into the area so those part-time jobs can convert to full-time jobs. So then there's some labor and income information there. And then the, the fun thing that we all know on the next page is that we, we have a lot of volunteers in our community. And it's not, it, we like to make sure that we're holding them up. Um, and since 2016, we've given um, over 25 awards up to different people in the community. So we have a handful of different awards that we give out. All those awards are posted on our website. And um, a nomination forms are just posted yesterday. So um, the nominations will close at the end of January. And um, so there's anywhere from volunteer of the year to um, restaurant of the year and a handful of other awards. So, if you have anybody in the tourism industry that you think you should be lifting up, please nominate them. The next slide, Joe. Great. Anybody have any questions for you? Excellent. That's really good. Thank you. So we are not dissing you. That's our applause <laughs> soundtrack. <Yeah. laughs> so we did a fun. Oh, I want to congratulate you on that. Well, those are great numbers. Yeah, those are good things to remember. To see eight years what you've accomplished. Exactly. Yeah. It takes a team. It does. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Continue to do great things up there. Nice job. You too. We'll open the floor to public comment. And we will close public comment and we bring the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Support. We have a motion and support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 9-0. Agenda item J1, 2020 budget. Motion to hold a public hearing on the 2020 budget on Wednesday, December 18, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. as presented. Support. We have a motion and support, Jan. Yeah. Yeah, so fun stuff. And <laughs> Um, we've all had a copy of the budget for a couple of weeks now. I just wanted to point out a few things, trying not to take very long. Um, the first, for, for those of you new to the board, the public hearing requirement, that is a state of Michigan thing. You don't have to do that for fun. That's a requirement of Public Act 2 of 1968, the Reform Budget and Accounting Act. Um, they make us do it. But it's a good thing. And also the resolution to en enact a general appropriations act um, that'll be in front of you at the next meeting. That's also part of Public Act 2 of 1968. They make us do that too. So that's it. If anybody asks why we do it, it's because it's in Public Act 2. So just a few things from the budget. Um, the footnotes I think are new to you folks as far as these printouts from, from the SNA. Uh, those came from department heads um, when they submitted their budgets or sometimes I added them if it was I saw something of significance that was going to be cheap, going to be different. No, it, it, it helps us, especially to get to the, some of the, the line items that are, that are different. It helps us track, uh, is this budgeted or not budget expenditure? We have a little bit of history inside it to know what was, was expected. <coughs> um, anybody, anybody bring their budgets? Yes, you mm -hmm. did. Work. Um, anybody didn't? I have one extra. Okay, on um, page 53 of 53, just kind of cutting to the chase, that's the, uh, the general fund total. And I just want to, to point out the, the change in appropriations to, from um, 2018, 2019 amended, and that we're proposing for 2020. Um, it actually dropped slightly from 18 to 19, um, but since there was also a, a appropriate appropriation the general fund in April that kind of explains that a little bit. And then for the 2020 is the 13.9. That's kind of the total. Um, but I also wanted to point out on page 46 or 53, that is our formal DPW. And there's still expenditures that come out of that for contract the services we have with the um, 
customer. But the main thing I wanted to show you is on uh, line item 720 in the expenditures, how back in 2018, it was $749,000 for the pension. That was when the folks made a really wise decision of putting dumping much, much money into the pension. Okay, and the, so 2019, it was still 60500 Well, now, you see in 2020, it's only $4,250. So compared to $60,000, which was the normal amount to pay into the pension annually, it's now just over 4000 And that's a, obviously a direct result of paying that $700,000 from the pension. So there's a nearly immediate change in expenditures in our pension. Um, so yeah, it takes 10, 11, 12 years to get the full ROI, but it is an almost immediate reduction of the repair of the So I just want to show you folks the impact of that that has. And on page 51 to 53, um, got $50,000 in reserve that's completely unallocated. Hopefully we do not spend that. Hopefully that will go back into fund balance, but just in case there's uh, roof leak or a furnace blows up or what, what have you, um, then we have the money available fairly quickly. And of course, anything in terms would come before the board for approval. But that's uh, it's also could be used. We could have a number in um, payroll contingency if we want to start budgeting that way for, for next year, um, in anticipation of, of wages. Um, we could put money, uh, you know, half the amount in payroll contingency there instead of trying to budget for it. It just depends on, on how, we, how we want to work things. But that's, I just wanted to point out that that $50,000 is, is kind of new for how we how folks are used to budgeting. And then also on page, the following page, 52, um, on line item 99911, that's the, uh, the pick money, the, the public improvement funds, the $268,000, and you kind of look and say, well, okay, where does that go? Well, if you flip to um, the other funds, page 10, going down, it shows where some of those are going. The first one is uh, 979 for uh, data processing. Uh, that's the 30 grand there. That's also hasn't been done in the past, as I understand it. That's, we need to start saving money for new computers, even though we just bought a ton, thanks to our treasurer. Here she is. I wish I had that one. <laughs> You're next. I'm sure of it. Um, <laughs> like, of course, we're last. <laughs> no, I'm last. Um, we can't depend on the foreclosure money in the future. Um, the money that's going on in the state, so I want to start cutting away money. Thirty. We really need to, just because the numbers of computers the county has, we really need to, it's, it's roughly between thirty and $40,000 a year to pay for a recurring replacement of computers on a regular schedule of every five years. That's just the cost. So instead of trying to magically come up with 150 grand every two years, I'd really prefer to do this because it's, it's just cheaper and the money just continues to be there. The other transfer out for the, uh, the PIC fund is on page 12 of 43 there. Um, we got 31 grand for the, the JLD installation of the crossbars and steel panels so that help us when we get rolling on that in January. And, uh, Twenty thousand dollars to start saving money for the parking parking lot reconstruction on Lake Street. That's a real hazard. It's going to cost more than twenty grand for sure. But this is a start. We need to start somewhere. I just wanted to point those out. So, kind of how do we how do we know this is a solid budget? Um, the finance committee has seen most of this already. Let me briefly run through the, the history of how it's works in this. This county, this old pork and shrimp. And this is the history of 2004 to 2008. That's a general fund trend for the county. 2000 looks like I could have lost the year we started using PGBSC. I pulled the numbers I had available. 
So you can see how the general accounts you can't do that on screen. Those are audited numbers up top. Uh, green is the revenues, and red is the expenditures. Uh, down below is the audited fund balance. So you can see how everything's kind of look, going up. between the original budget and kind of the, the pink, the light red, and the audited expenditures in the dark red. You can see there's a general s rule we budget expenditures higher than they actually come out to be, and there's a steady history of that. There was an anomaly in 2018, I think that is. Um, but again, in a general sort of way, that, that's how it works, and that's you know traditional. This is basically that same thing, only expanded, so you can kind of see an exaggeration of the, those same numbers for the original budget and the actual audited numbers. Uh, and I added 2019 to this one, so you can see how that's kind of bouncing up. Stupid thing worth it. You can see how. I don't know what happened in 2018 budget for the original expenditures, but you can see how it probably really should have been just a steady increase there, so kind of bouncing down, and then it would have been kind of in line with, with those numbers in the previous years. And then, so then, kind of same thing with revenues. Original budget revenues, you like green, actual revenues are in the, the dark green. And it bounced around a little bit, and clearly the, uh, Recession it had a lot to do with the the problems with the uh, with the budgeting there, but again in a general general trend, certainly in the last two years, the actual revenues are higher than the budgeted revenues. So then again, again kind of going back to putting these all together, showing the actual expenditures versus the actual revenues and then but then you kind of start looking and say why is the fund balance going up when we've got the expenditures higher than the revenues it doesn't make sense it's like well it's because this is just a general fund and it gets really complicated once you get diving in further than that um, because a general fund is only one piece of the county's budgetary puzzle but it's the biggest piece so that's why those numbers don't really seem to make a lot of sense but at the end of the day when you get done with the audit fund balance goes up. So at the end of 2018, um, fund balance was 5.8 million, which is 45% of the actual expenditures. So what we're looking at right now, I mean again, that's that 5.8 million from the audited fund balance. We pulled out that 181 in April for the budget amendments, and we're looking at right now the 200,000 13 to, to balance general fund budget, you're still left with 5.4 million. That's 39, almost 39 percent of your budgeted general fund. Um, that would be yeah, roughly 1.2 million dollars above the 30 percent that your uh, your policy is is required at this point. And I did not um, take into account any of the this kind of that same graph again. Um, the state line item vetoes, but I just got the news from our, uh, from our, our press guy that uh, some of them are coming back. So that is good news. Um, and again, it's like we have uh, Wexford County, and thanks to the, the, the good decisions the commission has made in the past, we have a very solid fund, fund balance, and I think this is a very solid budget. Everything is in here. Wages, wage increases are already in there. Health insurance increases are in there. Pension increases are in there. And that's the vast majority of the budget. And traditionally, the expenditures um, are budgeted high, come in lower, revenues are budgeted low, and they come in higher. I have, I have fairly high certainty unless something bizarre happens that even though you know, you're kind of borrowing from fund balance to balance the budget, that we will not actually have to do that. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Any Excellent. questions? We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Bentley? Yes. Bush? Yes. Ewell? Yes. 
Nichols? Yes. Connor? Yes. Robert? Yes. Austin? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9-0. Agenda item J2 Resolution 19-27. Motion to approve resolution 19-27 resolution to implement the public act 152 health care requirement for 2020. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Bush? Yes. Bebaum? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Robert? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9-0. And item J3 cell phone. Motion to have approve the 911 Central Dispatch Director have a county owned cell phone. Support. We have a motion and support discussion. Roll call, please. Seabone? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Robert? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9 0. Agenda item J4, policy B 14.3. Motion to approve the revisions of policy B-14.3 health insurance. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Thiebaud? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9-0. Agenda item J-5 policy revisions. Motion to approve the revisions to sections A, C, D, E, and F of the policy manual. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Potter? Yes. Robert? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Bebaum? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9 0. Agenda item J6, fiscal year 2020 snowmobile grant. Motion to approve the fiscal year. 2020 Snowmobile Law Enforcement Program Grant Agreement, the amount of $4,000, and authorize the chair to sign the grant. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Robert? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Wendling? Yes. Bush? Yes. Bebo? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9 0. Agenda item J7 BIS Digital Recording Equipment. Motion to approve the equipment purchase from BIS Digital for the front of the court in the amount of $6,435.45. Following section I3 of the county policy D-1-0 purchasing contracts and sales and authorize the chairman to sign quote 8014797. Support. We have a motion and support discussion. Roll call, please. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Thiebaud? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes, ma'am. Probert? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 9 0. Agenda item J8 Medical Marijuana Operation. Motion to approve applying for the fiscal year 2020 Medical Marijuana Operation and Oversight. Support. support. We have a motion and support discussion. Roll call, please. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Bebaum? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Robert? No. Musta? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes A1. Agenda item J9, Committee of the Whole. Um, motion to form a committee of the whole for the purpose of discussing central dispatch 911. Support. We have a motion and support. Roll call. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Bebo? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Robert? Yes. Musta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Taylor? Yes. We are on the committee the whole. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'd uh, sadly have to mention is our December 10th date for getting electrical electrical hookup. I've been getting calls from consumer last few days. Um, rattling of cages has loosened up the phone lines apparently. Um, we may not make the 10th. Um, because of uh, so many crews have been helping people get their power back because of the storm. So hopefully it'll be later than 11 to 12. But I, who knows? If we get more bad weather, it may get good back. But they are, they are trying hard. Mr. Gitten kind of That's it. <laughs> motion to rise and report the findings of for the committee of the Order. We have a motion to support. All in favor say aye. 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 We are back in regular committee. Agenda item J9A application. 
Motion to approve the application and certificates of payment to order of destruction in the amount of seventy-five thousand one hundred seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. Support. Okay, motion to support, Janet. No. Or are you just? I know you no, I'm just. Say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it's kind of in here with the. It's, uh, yeah, everything's there. Everything's yeah. there. Any discussion on it? Roll call, please. Bush. Yes. Siebel. Yes. Nichols. Yes. Potter. Yes. Probert. Yes. Musta. Yes. Townsend. Yes. Bendley. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Motion passes nine zero agenda item J ten city Cadillac LDFA. Motion to appoint Commissioner Mike Bill Benjamin to the City of Cadillac LDFA. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Debo? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Potter? Yes. Robert? Yes. <laughs> Masta? Yes. Townsend? Yes. Benjamin? Yes. Bush? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Thank you, Mike. The administrator's report. I will not be able to attend tomorrow's record building meeting. Um, maybe in route to Lansing, um, we had a, a labor relations training day on Friday. Employee evaluations, aging workplace, and arbitration case studies. Can't wait for that Friday afternoon. Um, but I don't really like driving at night in the snow, so I'm going to be going down tomorrow afternoon. And that one last thing on the budget, thank you for, uh, for moving forward with that. I appreciate that very much. I, I do want to uh, let you know how hard uh, all the department heads work to keep the numbers down. Um, I did go back to the department heads at one point and ask for, for reductions. Um, number of folks, uh, Judge Fagerman reduced his uh, number of fees. Um, line items, registered needs, did, treasurer did. Uh, my office did. I had the whole command staff from the sheriff's office in my, in my office one day in late August. We were kind of pouring through their budget and they were um, doing their best to, to turn things down um, and still keep their officers and, and kind of residents safe. So I, I think it hats, off, hats off to all our departments for trying to get their numbers down too. But I mean, just it, it's hard. It's getting, it's getting harder. There's only so much we can trim. Um, I'll be doing budget analysis over the winter over uh, yeah. how much of the departments are budgets are wages and benefits and how much is everything else just so you folks have a better understanding of, of what is actually out there and what, what can be done. Um, I mean, my department, I think, is at 94% wages and benefits. There's not a whole lot I can cut. Um, and other departments are very similar. It's like they, uh, departments, and since the recession, and it's, and it's the same with a lot of municipalities. They <coughs> cut and cut and cut and cut. Um, and there's really not many places left to go. Thank you. Correspondence. We have correspondence from the City of Cadillac BBA and the Wexford Joint Planning Commission. Does anybody else have any other correspondence? Then we'll open the floor to public comment. Could you talk about the budget thing in your public comment? Rick. Oh, Rick, I'm sorry, Rick. I'm thinking. I don't know how much they just did it. So, jail funding, uh, road patrol, and like tuition grants. Are all, all back in? They're all back in. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Payment loan? There might be more. Payment loan? Where's the machine? Thank you, Mark. Oh, Thanks. Thank Appreciate it, Mark. <laughs> 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 Liaison reports. Nichols. Uh, I went to Northwest Michigan Community Action Agency, and one of the things they did a couple days after that is stop in at one of the um, the uh, Head Start schools. Then let me come in, and I did some music with the children, and that was a lot of fun. And then I went to the District Ten Health Department, and that's all. Those minutes will come to you, and that's also online. If you'd like to look at that. Uh, Clemlink EDA is up for a renewal with their township and they're hoping they can vote it in uh, to continue. Um, outside of that, airport, we have nothing going on. Robert? No. Musta? None. Townsend? We are at Northwest meeting on Monday night. Um, the commissioners were very interested in our jail and uh, also the, the uh, Fawcett Center. And, uh, and they had a lot of questions for it. And I invited some of them to come down and tour the jail, uh, specifically the commissioner from Grand Travers. And they're looking for things, and other commissioners have toured, toured the jail from other counties. And so it's really 
to them, that's one of our crown jewels. So it's good to get out beyond our county and see how we're looked at in those areas. And uh, the real good, real good meeting that we had in the commissioners. So, thanks. Angela? None. Bush? None. Evolve? None. Taylor? None. Board comments? Patrick? No. Uh, let's do this one more time. Uh, Jack Donchie's in the audience tonight. Jack uh, last night was appointed uh, uh, the commissioner of Cedar Creek Sorry, Township Supervisor. Let me get it right. And uh, please it open if anybody's interested in a trustee's position. Congratulations, Jack, and let's hope this one works. It will. It will. Masta? None. Townsend? No problem. Benjamin? <laughs> I would, I would like to thank everybody that worked on the budget, our finance, yeah. it is, was great, uh, the committee, that's a lot of work, and uh, the budget looks great, and I thank everybody involved, we have a great team here, and you all did a great job, thank you. Push. Ditto on the budget, also appreciate it, hard work you guys do, and also Joy and her crew down there, to, uh, bringing all those dollars into the community. And, uh, you start looking at it, I mean, of course, I know, but it really shares it out there for everybody to see what they actually do um, and bring those dollars in. Appreciate that. People? I would like to say thank you to Joy for having a free spot for people to advertise their stuff so you can one stop shop and know what's going on in our community. That's, that's been a disconnect for many years, so it's nice to know that that's out there. I'd also like to invite fellow commissioners and the public in general to help ring bells for Salvation Army. They're really struggling this year. They've been able to hire, I believe it's four people to ring bells for them and they can't find anybody to even hire. So anytime that you can volunteer for that, that would be wonderful. Um, the community really needs those dollars. So thank you very much. Nichols? I want to congratulate Jack. It was, um, I appreciate your leadership in that group. And also thank you to Joy for coming tonight. And you're a real go-getter, and I appreciate that about you and your enthusiasm for our community. Our community. And then my husband and I went to the orchestra concert, and we watched our admin. She was up there with the violin. So congratulations on a beautiful concert. That was good for you. Congratulations, Jim. And thank you for coming, Joy. Support. 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 Support.